All right, hello, and welcome back to my RTS tutorial in Unity. Today, we're going to be doing sort of like laying the groundwork for having buildings in the game and sort of the various functionality that they can have. So, for this first part, I've basically just got uh, we've got the basic building class, and uh, yeah, I'll just show you basically. So, if we just switch that to create buildings. So I've already like done the uh, creating building code uh, code in the uh, in one of the I did a tile based tutorial series which is what this continued on because I decided I wanted to make it an RTS. So that is where the actual placement of the buildings comes in. So if I just click here, create a well, it creates it in the same place roughly <laughs> because it has to work by the tiles. Uh, place the temp, right, so that we place one, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so if I switch that to units, so if we make the, uh, actually select them and send these dudes to get resources, they will then find uh, one of these warehouses to go to because I have added a couple of things. Uh, there was the uh, building store that has all the buildings in the scene and stuff like that, and we've got the storehouse that has its own class now, which we'll be doing for all the buildings or that we need, so say like a barracks or a town hall or whatever, just to sort of create the uh, units and stuff we'd use in the game. And one other thing is that I added code to... Uh, basically, it when you place a building, it finds a point like just below the building. So if you can imagine the center point is here, it goes down and finds the first walkable tile that's below the building. Just so like that acts as a reference point. So say when these workers want to go to that building, they will move towards that point rather than say the center of the building, because that might result in an error with the pathing because it's trying to get towards something that's surrounded by unwalkable tiles. And I also has the dual function of being a spawn point for units or whatever when I implement that. So yeah, let's get on to how this works. Okay. So first off, I'm going to show you how the uh, getting the point to point where units should move to is used with the buildings, just so, because I think that's easy enough to talk about. So first off, when we create a building in the create building at location method, which we covered in the video the buildings in my tile system in Unity tutorial. So when we create the building, we will get the X, the high bound of the X and Y points because each building is basically a grid of tiles and yeah. So it'll be the highest X value and highest Y value. And then we take away half the width of the building, which is calculated by the high bound minus the low bound for that respective axis. And we divide that by two. So that gets the midpoint of each axis. And then we get the tile. And we call this new method that I've written for the building class called set tile near me, which is basically the tile that we're referencing. And we pass in the get tile of mid X and mid Y. And then we add it to this buildings and scene list that we have in building store now, which is new. Uh, just so basically we have a reference to all the scenes we've built in this building. Built in the scene, sorry. So yeah, uh, building. So we set tile. Oh, wait. Sorry. Uh, but, but where was I? Uh, yeah, set tile near me. And we get the tile at the midpoint. And that gets passed into the building class for that particular building, which is basically so we pass that tile in that's the middle tile of the building. So sorry, I'm just repeating myself. What we do, we get the grid coordinates, and then we take away half the uh, like half the height of the building which we have here because we define use that to work out how many what type. Like how many tiles we should make uh, unwalkable so the pathfinder doesn't get messed up. 
then we add one just to make sure that it's out of that little loop around the uh, edge of the building, which is unworkable. And then we take that from the Y coordinate, and this gives us a new set of X and Y coordinates in this array, uh, the array, 2D array of tiles that we have as the world, which is the tile that we will use to act as a reference point for when units go into this building or a spawn from this building. And then we just have another class that we can use to get to the, the tile. Okay, I hope that made sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, got, uh, get nearest tile for buildings. That's done that. Set tile near me, done that. Uh, what's the buildings and scene? Uh, building store should have uh, basically a get building of nearest building of type. So string type is basically just going to be the building's name. So if we look in the inspector, we've got a uh, temple, storehouse, whatever. Uh, so first off, I click on the right script. We look for that. We go through the list of the buildings in the scene and we find all of the uh, buildings that are of that type. So say if we search search for storehouses, we get all them. And we also provide a position for the unit that's calling it because we want to get the closest one to it. So say if we're looking to drop off some resources, we'll give us our position and we'll get the closest possible storehouse to us. So after it's got all the possible storehouses in the scene, you could uh, you get a current distance of 9999. So basically we wanted to guarantee that whatever distance we have before uh, after this, sorry, whatever distance between the the first uh, building that we found and our position is smaller. We, sorry, do an horrible job of this. All right, basically, the value is a hundred thousand or one under because we want to be certain that the fir the distance will be smaller than that. So the first distance will be put into that. Say if it's thirty units away, so it'll be current distance. And if we put uh, 20, and then if the next one was 20, that would replace it as well, which is what we do here. But if we didn't have this, uh, like 999, we had like zero, it wouldn't be, no thing would be less than it. And if it was like even a reasonable number, like 100, you might still have buildings that are 100 units away in Unity units from the uh, unit that was calling it. So that might get left out or something. So it's a ridiculously high number just to ensure that you get the max possible chance of finding a building. Okay. And then, as I said, we go through all the buildings, we get the building's position as a vector two, and we work out what the distance is. And if the distance is lower than the current distance, then we set the two values, so current distance and the return value for being the building that we found. And if rep value is something, then we return rep value, else we return null. So I'm like, okay, we've not found a building, I bought this. Uh, what else? And I think that is, uh, wait, sorry. But yeah, this is basically, we use this in a position of store, uh, this kind of, we use this code in the position of storehouse. So basically we're getting the nearest building of type storehouse. Uh, and we're passing in the uh, workers' position because they're the only ones at the moment that can have gather resource. And then we can get go to tile because we're getting the calling the uh, buildings get go to tile method, which returns this uh, tile that is one below the building in like the center of it, of its x axis, sorry. And we get that tiles transform dot position, so we get it as a vector three, and that is basically defined as the position of the storehouse for gathering resources. Now we have this in a try and catch, so in some kind of case, say if you didn't have a storehouse or it returned null or something, uh, basically you can see uh, if I just prove that we have got stuff selected units. So if we do this, sorry, I'm forgetting the button. So I've got all the workers selected. It just moves in there because we don't have a thing, but no errors pop up apart from this argument out of range exception, which I have no idea why that is. 
But when we do build a uh, storehouse, we might have to work on the uh, placement of stuff. Uh, if we do work the wheat, so if I click the worker, you can see that they are gathering resources and they're all moving and they're moving towards this front tile there. But since there's like a distance of a, uh, I think it's like if it's within two units and the tiles are one unit a piece, so it'll stop a bit early. But if we reduce that uh, distance between the next tile or the distance between tiles, whatever, we'd see that it would walk right up to that tile here. And I've even got it debugging it. Oh, I did. Uh, tile nearest, yeah, 10 8 road. So it's saying it's a road tile at 10 and 8. So 10, line 8. Uh, we can see that in the scene that it is that tile. So it's, like I said, in the middle point of the x axis, but one below. So it's a walkable tile. And it's not like surrounded by those unwalkable tiles that you can see that are highlighted in turquoise. And yeah, uh, is there anything else? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, basically, I've started creating child classes of uh, the building type. Uh, basically, I'm going to have uh, implementing, so I'm going to be implementing some new virtual methods with, so say things like, what kind of buttons you'd need to draw and what they do when you uh, draw them and click on them and stuff. So say like you'd have a button for creating units in a barracks or something, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, something like that, you get the idea. <laughs> and maybe displaying what kind of resources you've got on a storehouse and drawing all the GUI for that and stuff. So. That will be done in the next part. I just wanted to get some groundwork done, which isn't that interesting, but it was technical and it was needed. So yeah. All right, so in conclusion, basically what we did was we've now got code so that when we add buildings to the scene, they get stored in a buildings and scene list in the building store script. This is just so we can access them. We can, uh, when we're giving orders, oh shit, I need to change the thing, don't I? Don't do that. Uh, tiles, units. So click units, and we'll be able to see that they will go to this tile in front of it. So we can set like a sort of rally spawn point type deal with the buildings as well now. And we've also started creating storehouses, or not storehouses, sorry, uh, child subclasses, sorry, use the right words, two and a half years into a computer science degree, I still struggle with it, but whatever. Uh, so you can see, I didn't actually show that, but uh, the storehouse, which is a subclass, which I'll do a couple of these, which will just show, and some more virtual functions in the building next time, because this episode was just about uh, some useful functionality for buildings that we need to get out of the way before we could start properly implementing them. And as you'll see in the, as you saw in the note at the start, actual placement of buildings in the scene was done in my, uh, what was it? Grid system into Unity tutorial. So go watch that if you want to know how the placement works and how it works out the number of tiles that you need to set on walkable for where the building is and yeah so cheers for watching like comment subscribe all that shit uh go check out all the stuff on itch.io there's various links down in the uh comment section not comments uh description all of it's good stuff i promise and uh, yeah and omega station omega station sorry my final year uni project got released so uh if you want to play that give me, go, go download it actually. And if you'd like to help me out with the reporting, finally of it, uh, just leave a comment because I have a separate version which collects data on the runs you do. And I'll email you that or something. And that'll all be good. So yeah, cheers for watching, bye.